like lit written english and uh, today we are going to talk about little boy crying that is a poem by mervyn morris uh, usually in our daily life in different cultures they don't consider uh, hitting a child from as a, a, a punishment especially in western cultures today we are going to talk about this poem that is the text of the poem your mouth contorting in brief spite and hurt your laughter metamorphosed into howls your frame so recently relaxed now tight with three year old frustration your bright eyes swimming tears splashing your bare feet you stand there angling for a moment's hint of guilt or sorrow for that quick slap struck. The ogre towers above you, that grim giant, empty of feeling, a colossal cruel, soon victim of the tale's conclusion, dead at last. You hate him, you imagine, chopping clean the tree he is scrambling down or plotting deeper pits to trap him in. You cannot understand, not yet. The hurt you, your easy tears can scold him with. Nor guess the wavering hidden behind that mask. This fierce man longs to lift you, curb your sadness with piggyback or bull fight, anything. But they are not ruin the lessons you should learn. You must not make a plaything of that rain. When so, you are trying to read this poem, it is like a boy who has been hit by the, ch by, the by his father, and the boy wishes the dad to be dead. He wishes that the dad should apologize. But before we go on, oh. Uh, you know there are these times when you try to correct your to discipline your child but the child is does not understand now before we continue because we, we are going to look at even the summary of this poem which is examined for those students who are doing IGSE Cambridge program it is one of the poem that you are supposed to analyze or you are you may be asked to analyze the exam but before we go further let's look at the context where when and why the poem was written basically this poem was written by Mer Mer Mervyn Morris and uh, this is a Jamaican poet and it was written in 2006 and we are told that this poem was written when he was in his 70s. So he's looking back at a time where either he's a father acting like this to his young son or he's the child thinking about his father's attitude to discipline. You you know when we look back in our life how the parents used to correct us or to discipline us because of some misconduct or some mis some mistakes we have made and our parents don't wish us to be in discipline so that we can prepare our future very well. Now, of course, hitting a child currently, especially in Western culture, is considered as unacceptable. But more is, is trying to explore the past and the previous attitudes to discipline and parenting in certain cultures. It is also still an, an, an accepted form of punishment. Some cultures accept that a child should be punished physically. You just cane him or you slap him. And typically in Jamaican culture, there is less taboo about this type of so, which means in Jamaican culture, they allow people to slap, to cane a child, which is not acceptable in the UK, USA and even the UK. Now, of course, when you're analyzing this point, we need also to be aware that there is a cultural difference when we are 
uh, analyze this poem don't forget uh, about the cultural differences we have different cultures there are cultures where a child hitting a child or just slapping him or caning him is acceptable then before we continue you know whenever you are analyzing a poem it's very important for you to understand some of the vocabulary so there are some few vocabularies we have selected here and we try to try to understand their meaning because they will be helping us to understand the point now there is contorting contorting it is twisting or curling up or bending then there is another word spite spite that is usually driven by anger or a desire to hurt or annoy someone then metamorphosed it is like to transform or to change metamorphosed that is changed or transformed the angling force that is trying to get something without directly asking for it you get it by force or being obvious about it a hint at a suggestion guilty that is in the point it seems the, the child wanted the father to feel guilt because of what he did hitting him that that is a feeling of deep remorse or, and regret after one has done something that is clearly but you have colossal there is uh, this adjective colossal huge or big like a giant statue then there is another word scrambling that is hurrying clumsily up or over something usually using hands and feet then wavering that is hovering back and forth between two things knowing not knowing what to do now uh, let's go to some introduction of the key ideas in this poem so when you try to analyze this point is a controversial poem in many ways now what is basic in he, this poem is that we have this child who is upset because he has been hit by his father because the father wanted to discipline him but we are presented when you when you are reading the poem you will see the perspective of the child and even the perspective of the the the, the parent and the the situation is somehow in ambiguous now this of of course it, it, it helps sometimes to, it makes us ask ourselves you know, is physical punishment or corporal punishment and more and is it important informative or an objective discipline or maybe it is a cruel and extreme behavior of course because of our well, cultural differences or the cultural context you may be on one side or the other depending on your cultural context now Morris doesn't help us to know if by the time he was reading the po writing the poem he was reflecting uh, on his life or his past as a child or as a, uh, maybe a parent who punished maybe a child but regardless the poem sheds a lot of light on parent child relationships and explores a complex and nuanced way in which maturity and discipline are interconnected so which means by analyzing the poem we find that uh, it is like exploring the relationship between a, a child and a parent how do we consider the parent i mean the, the parents punishment when he pun or she punished us when we were young or even as or adult when we punish a child how do we feel sometimes we feel guilty as if you have made a mistake or correcting the, the misbehavior your child now it is also important to understand who is speaking the problem what is the voice in the poem it seems the speaker is talking straight to the boy it is like a parent who is talking about or like to, talking to the to, to the boy uh, about his father 
we assume the speaker is the poet himself, of course, because it is told from the first point of view. The boy did something that requires discipline, but after now punishing him, he became upset. He got angry. And this in turn hurt the father. Now, as a reader, we can now see the two sides of the argument because that uh, the story is told from a removed point of view. So there is no one is there. Now, we can now consider this poem in two ways. The father maybe could be a good parent who feels that it is important to teach uh, his child some kind of discipline on some important rules and where he should not go beyond. Or he can also be a bad parent who lost his temper. You know, when you punish a child, when you are very angry sometimes, or most of the times it becomes a problem, then you may even kill him. That is one side. Another side, it may be maybe a good boy who is even an innocent child who has been maybe hurt by his, his father's outburst. Out of anger, he punished him and yet he didn't make a serious mistake. Or, this also can be a spoiled, the story can be about a spoiled child, an indisciplined child who is throwing a tantrum. And there is a subtle exploration of parent child relationships. It is very important to analyze the structure or the form of the poem. When you try to read the poem, it seems that is like a narrative poem. It is a poem that is telling us a story. Remember, a narrative poem, oh, it is like it tells us a story, something which happened. Now, when you are reading each stanza, is a one single sentence, and it is explores a different ideas from the previous or from the next. Of course, this one gives us also a narrative feeling to the poem as it is an anecdote or something that happened, which we can call an experience. Now, when you read the first three stanzas, they are seven, six, six lines respectively. So they are composed of six. The first one, seven. The second and the third one stanza, they have six lines. Now, when you try to analyze these things, they have a large, too much information about which contrasts with the f final stanza and the final stanza that is a monostich or which is a poem of one line at the last line you must not make a plaything of the rain stands by itself so which means it improves a point it serves as a lasting me uh, message even though some things are difficult or ple pleasant they are still necessary so which means it seems maybe the uh, child has been playing in the rain and the father told him no just go and finally he punished him now when you are talking about the structure it is also very important to analyze the length of lines and uh, which lines are stressed and unstressed and we have now if we try to analyze the rhythm of the poem and the rhythm that is up and down of syllables in a word we can say now that is iambic pentameter. Pentameter that is five feet, and the foot is composed of a stressed and an unstressed syllable. So if if you didn't uh, study this, maybe we shall have another lesson about it. But when you are talking about rhythm in a song, is when there is up and down or stressed and unstressed syllable, which helps us the beat to be down and up. Now the lines are written in, in iambic pentameter, which means we have ten syllables, which are five feet. A foot is made up of one or two or more lines. I mean stressed and unstressed syllable. So which means to have a foot, we should have a stressed and unstressed syllable. Now, each foot comprised of an unstressed and a stressed syllable. This meter is said to be closely imitate natural speech. It is like when you read the, st the, the poem, 
it is like a natural speak it is like a child who is talking to his father or a father who is talking to his child so the fact that the poet has used iambic pentameter which imitates the natural speech it gives another poem a controversial style that makes it seem as if the speaker is like having a conversation or a discussion with his child about the behavior it is like the father is telling the son don't make that mistake again now when you try to analyze also the structure you find that there is no formal rhyme scheme though there is some assonance or repetition of vowel sounds that connect through vowels throughout because we have tight we have eye and bright and eyes they have feet and hint which are soft rhyming sounds through the poem and it gives a lullaby quality remember a lullaby that is a song that is sung for the child or for the baby to sleep it is like the father is just telling our son you need to be corrected uh, the, now what is the story the, the, the summary of the story now from stanza one we find that the father has hit a young boy of three years and the boy is crying previously we find that the boy was happy was laughing smiling relaxed but now tense is now tense and upset now the boy looks for guilty or sorrow in the father he wants the father to apologize he wants the father to feel guilty because he has hit his son so he wants him to regret to feel the remorse and to show that he was wrong now stanza two the child views the parent as a nogger because of his size and the cruelty so you 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 can see the boy very young very small and the father of course huge so the child views now the father now the second stanza from the second stanza we get the view how the perspective of the child the parent of the parent by the father by the child is a noga is huge is cruel and the boy is perhaps scared of the father the boy hates the father at this point because he can't understand why the father slapped him and another thing is that the boy doesn't understand why doesn't why the father doesn't feel remorse so when you try to read the second standard it seems the boy imagines getting revenge it seems i should repent of course the uh, the boy is too young you know when you are very young we sometimes we are too young to understand why parents punish us and uh, when you try to read the poem it seems the father pretends not to be hurt by what he has done but from the inside he feels bad then uh, something comes in his mind like pushing him to play with the boy and maybe make him happy but he doesn't do it because he feels that if he plays with the child after punishing him the father i mean the child will not feel guilty will not learn a lesson then stanza four the poem ends with a single line about how we should take the rain serious it is not a play thing something to mess around with so when something happened when it is it is like a son has been playing in the rain then the father slapped him just because he made that mistake you know when you play in the rain sometimes a child as a child you can fall sick or you start shivering because sometimes it may cause some sickness so rain in this poem can also be a metaphor a metaphor that is when you call something something else which suggests that things we don't like sometimes are important and good for us which means if we we don't like people to punish us but it teaches us a lesson 
So the father wants to play with the boy, but he needs him to take the discipline seriously. So 